Hi, now I've got three examples here that you might like to try. These are follow-up examples that you can commonly be asked on the exponential form of a complex number. I would certainly encourage you to have a go at number three though, okay, because there's a slight twist in it. But we've got these three questions here. Number two here doesn't look so clear. Is z equals 5e i to the 2 pi over 3? We've got to express it in the form z equals a plus bi. Now, do have a go at these, especially number three. And just pause the video and uh, come back when ready or fast forward to any of these solutions to see my work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, let's have a look at number one first of all. Express z equals minus one minus root three i in the form z equals r e to the i theta, what we call the exponential form then of a complex number. And to do this, what I would encourage you to do is think about what z would look like on an argon diagram. And so you can see I've just sketched it here that uh, we have z equals minus 1 minus root 3i. Obviously, I've just put the magnitude of these lengths here. And we've got the arg of z is given by this angle round here. And that is theta. So theta is the arg of z in the exponential form, and r is the modulus. So let's first of all go and get the arg of z. So I've put in this acute angle alpha here, and so we can get alpha. We know that alpha equals the inverse tan of the opposite side over the adjacent. So it's going to be root 3 over 1, or in other words, just simply root 3. And in degrees, this would come out at 60 degrees, but we must work in radians here. So 60 degrees in radians is pi upon 3 radians. So when it comes to working out what theta is, remember it is the arg or argument of the complex number z. And it's going to be a negative angle. So that negative angle is going to be pi radians minus alpha, pi minus alpha. Alpha is pi upon 3, and so if we do pi minus pi upon 3, that's going to be 2 thirds pi, but we've got a minus out there, so theta is going to be minus 2 thirds pi, or 2 pi over 3. So we've got the theta part then of our exponential form of our complex number. We just need r, and we should be familiar with the fact that r is equal to the modulus of z. Okay, r equals the mod of z. We'll just put that in there. And to get the modulus of z, it's just basically Pythagoras' theorem, the root of the sum of the squares of these two sides. So it's going to be root 3 all squared plus 1 squared. And if you work that out, we've got 3 plus 1 is 4. The root of 4 is 2. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, therefore, we can say that z equals r, which is 2, e to the i theta. So theta is minus 2 pi over 3. I'm just going to put the minus there and then say i 2 pi over 3. All right, so the exponential form then of that complex number, z equals minus 1 minus root 3i. Right, we'll move on now to question two. So in question two, we've got to express this exponential form of the complex number z equaling 5e to the i times 2 pi over 3 in the form z equals a plus bi. And one way that I feel is the quickest, easiest way of doing this is to look at the mod arg form of a complex number. That is z equals r multiplied by the cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, where theta is the argument of the complex number and r then is the modulus. So what have we got then? Well, we know that the mod 
is 5, so we can put that at the front here, 5. And then for the arg, well, the arg is the theta value here, 2 pi over 3. So we've got the cosine then, or cos for short, 2 pi over 3. And then we've got plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. And then we just need to work these out. Cosine of 2 pi upon 3 radians, that's minus a half, so you've got 5 multiplied by minus a half. And the sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, so you've got plus i times root 3 over 2. Multiply out the bracket, and you end up with this equaling minus 5 over 2, and then plus 5 root 3 over 2. You can stick i at the front here, or I'm going to stick it at the back there, so that it's directly in that format there. OK, so that's number 2 then. Now for 3, I did say do have a go at this one, purely because it's got a slight twist in it. We'll have a look at it though. So for number 3, what I notice is that this is not in mod arg form. We've got to be very careful here. Mod arg form has a plus here, where theta is the arg of our complex number z. And it's very easy to think that pi upon 3 is going to be that arg, OK? And it's not, purely because we haven't got a plus here. We've got a minus, obviously. So we need to modify this. And to do this, you've got to be familiar with this rule here, that the cosine of any angle theta is equal to um, cosine of minus that angle theta. And when it comes to the sine of angle theta, it's always equal to minus the sine of minus theta. Now, if you're looking at this video on my website, I've got a tutorial uh, on this, okay, if you want to know the reasons why this is so. There should be a link below this video if you're viewing it, as I say, on my website. So how do we use this result? Well, let's take the question itself, z equals 4 times the cosine of pi upon 3 minus i sine pi upon 3. Now, as I say, we need to modify this. We've got to create a plus here. Well, we can easily do it by this result up here. We can think of this as still 4 multiplied by, instead of pi upon 3, we can use this top result here. We can think of this as the cosine of minus pi upon 3. But when it comes to the sine, of pi upon 3, we can think of it as minus the sine of minus pi upon 3. So we end up with minus minus plus, in other words, then i sine of minus pi upon 3. So this is now in the correct form, the mod arg form, which allows us then to see that the mod is 4, and the arg of the complex number z is minus pi upon 3. So that means that z can be written as 4 e to the minus i pi upon 3. OK? So I hope these three examples here have given you some background then to the types of things that you could be asked in an exercise on this. Okay, so uh, that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.